May of 2011, the World Health Organization classified radiofrequency radiation as a Class 2B potential cancer-causing carcinogen. The utility companies will tell us that the meters are only on for 45 or 60 seconds a day and that they're safe. So the next stop on my journey to verify the facts was with Dr. David Carpenter, a Harvard-trained researcher at the University of Albany, New York. Under court order, Pacific Gas and Electric admitted that their smart meters generate 14,000 spikes of communication per day. The utilities have often held that smart meters are not a problem because they communicate with the utility rather infrequently, maybe a couple of times an hour. It doesn't matter how frequently they communicate to the utility. What matters is how frequently do they generate radio frequency fields. And clearly the utilities have been hiding the fact that these smart meters generate these radio frequency fields almost continuously. They're pulses, but they're very, very frequent. So according to PG&E's court documentation, the average smart meter is on for 45 or 60 seconds a day but they've conveniently withheld from us that these 45 or 60 seconds are split up into 10,000 or more pulses, each at about four and a half milliseconds in duration, emitting all the time, every few seconds, 24 seven. And some meters are up to 190,000 pulses per day. The definition of a smart grid is a wireless system that will fundamentally turn every single appliance in your home into the equivalent of a transmitting cell phone. That's every, every computer, every television, every furnace, every air conditioner, every coffee machine, every printer. Every single appliance that you have in your house will eventually, in a smart grid, have an antenna that's embedded into it that will transmit your usage data to a smart meter on the outside of your home that will then transmit your usage data to another tower receiving a usage signal that will then go to the utility company for supposedly billing purposes. Not all signals will just be about your individual use. There will be aggregate uh, meters that will bounce signal from house to house to house within a neighborhood that will then accumulate all of the usage data that will transmit that to the utility company. Now, what that will do is that the end metering system that is transmitting all of that data will be firing an RF signal at many, many times a second, which will increase the average homeowner's radio frequency radiation exposure Exponentially. This picture shows some aphids on the leaf of an orange tree shortly after radar equipment was installed at a nearby airport a number of years ago. I noticed that every few seconds all the aphids would tense up in unison and do sort of a little dance as you see in the picture. Upon further investigation I found that the interval of time between the activity of each dance coincided exactly with the rotation of the radar rotor device at the airport, which was a distance of approximately 14 miles. And we now have vast amounts of published science on microwave radiation and health effects. The data we're gonna look at are all published science, testing results, or public standards. At the bottom end of the radiation scale of what's called power density or signal strength is the minimum level at which cell phones will work, which was found to be 0.2 billionths of a microwatt per centimeter squared. Pine needles were found to age prematurely at 0.000027. At short-term exposures of 0.05, children aged 8 to 17 experienced headache, irritation, concentration difficulties, and behavioral problems. Point one is the bow biology or building biology guideline for extreme concern. 1.0 produced sperm DNA fragmentation and a decrease in sperm viability in vitro. Also at 1.0, the science shows the following bodily effects can occur. Headaches, dizziness, fatigue, insomnia, chest pain, difficulty breathing, and indigestion. 2.5 saw altered calcium metabolism in heart muscle cells. 4.0, changes in the hippocampus affecting brain memory and learning, and at 6.0, DNA damage in cells. So where are smart meters on this list? Electrical Power Institute in December 2010 measured a single ITRON smart meter with pulses up to 7.93 microwatts per centimeter squared. 
Our own testing indicated approximately 8.0 with one meter. These tests are at a close distance, approximately one foot away from the meter, but an infant's crib could be just as close on the other side of the wall where the meter or bank of meters are installed. Even though there are all these known health effects at levels far lower, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, and Luxembourg see fit to set the standard at 9.5, and China, Poland, and Russia, 10.0. This is the same level at which behavior has been altered, producing reflexes of avoidance following 30-minute exposures. A room of 12 smart meters, very common and even a conservative number in an apartment building, tested at 19.8 microwatts per centimeter squared. This is hundreds of times higher than levels which clearly indicate harmful effects. So how can utilities and governments get away with forcing these devices on everyone? This is how. In Canada and the US and several other civilized countries, the safety limit is set at 600 to 1000 microwatts per centimeter squared. This so-called safety limit is literally tens of thousands of times higher than levels which are known to damage health according to peer-reviewed published science.